Muslim Christian Dialogue Part 2 The Holy Bible Muslim, are you sure that the Bible is holy? Christian, yes, I am very sure about it, for it is God's word. Muslim, read what Luke said about his recording in 1 colon 1 3. Christian, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us. Which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having held perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order. Most excellent Theophilus. Muslim, if Luke had said that he himself was not an eyewitness and the knowledge he gathered was from eyewitnesses and not as words inspired by God, would you still believe that the Bible is God's word? Christian, maybe only this part is not God's word. Muslim, history has shown that the Bible has been changed. The Revised Standard Version, 1952 and 1971, the New American Standard Bible, and the New World Translation have expunged certain verses that are found in the King James Version. The Reader's Digest has reduced the Old Testament by 50% and the New Testament by about 25% some years ago, Christian theologians wanted to de the Bible. Does holy mean that the Bible is free from error? Christian, yes, that is so. But what kind of error do you mean? Muslim, suppose one verse states that a certain person died at the age of 50 years and another verse states that the same person died at the age of 60 years? Can both statements be right? Christian, no, for only one can be right or both are wrong. Muslim, if a holy book contains conflicting verses, do you still consider it holy? Christian, of course not, because a holy scripture is a revelation from God. Therefore, it should be impossible that mistakes or conflicting verses could be found in it. Muslim, then it's not holy. Christian, right. In that case, its holiness disappears. Muslim, if so, you can't trust it 100% what could be the causes of such mistakes. Christian, it could be a mistake in the recording or deliberate changes by scribes, such as deletion or addition in it. Muslim, if there are conflicting verses in the Bible, do you still consider it holy? Christian, I believe that the Bible is holy, since I see no conflicting verses. Muslim, there are many conflicting verses in it. Christian, in the Old or New Testament. Muslim, in both testaments. These are some of them. Look also, 101 clear contradictions in the Bible, by Shabir Ali. 2 Samuel 24 verse 1. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. 1 Chronicles 21 verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel, and provoked David to number Israel. Question, is Satan the Lord of David? May God forbid it. 2 Samuel 6 verse 23. Therefore, Michal the daughter of Saul had no child until the day of her death. 2 Samuel 21 verse 8. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, whom she bore unto Saul, Anoni and Mephibosheth. And the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Odriel the son of Barzillai the Meholthite. Question, did Michal have children or not? Note, the name Michal in 2 Samuel 21. 8 is still present in the King James Version, and the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, used by the Jehovah's Witnesses. But has been changed to Merib in the New American Standard Bible, 1973. 2 Samuel 8 verse 4. And David took from him a thousand chariots and seven hundred horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. 1 Chronicles 18 verse 4. And David took from him a thousand chariots and seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. Question, seven hundred or seven thousand? 2 Samuel 8 verses 9 to 10. When Toy, king of Hamath, heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadadezer, then Toy sent Joram, his son, unto King David to salute him and to bless him. Because he had fought against Hadadezer and had smitten him, for Hadadezer had wars with Toy. And Joram took with him vessels of silver, and vessels of gold, and vessels of brass. 1 Chronicles 18 verses 9 to 10. Now when you, king of Hamath, heard how David had smitten all the host of Hadarazah, king of Zobah, he sent Hadaram, his son, to King David to inquire of his welfare and to congratulate him. Because he had fought against Hadarazah and had smitten him, for Hadarazah had made war with Tu, and with him all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass. 
Question, Toy or Tu, Joram or Hadaram, Hadadiza or Hadaraza. 1 Samuel 10 verse 18. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shobach, the captain of their host, who died there. 1 Chronicles 19 verse 18. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand men which fought in chariots, and forty thousand footmen, and killed Shophak, the captain of their host. Question, seven hundred chariots or seven thousand men? Forty thousand horsemen or footmen? Show bark or shop hack. 2 Kings 8 verse 26. 2 and 20 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. 2 Chronicles 22 verse 2, 40 and 2 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. Question, 22 or 42 years? 2 Kings 24 verse 8. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. 2 Chronicles 36 verse 9. Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. Question, 18 years or eight years? Three months or three months and ten days? 2 Samuel 23 verse 8. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino the Esnite, he lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. 1 Chronicles 11 verse 11. And this is the number of the mighty men who David had, Jashabim, and Hachmanite, the chief of the captains, he lifted up his spear against 300 slain by him at one time. Question, Tachmanite or Hachmanite? 800 or 300? Christian, I never saw any of these before. Are there many more? Muslim, do you still need to hear more? Are these examples not sufficient to deny its holiness? See Genesis 6 verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. But how old was Noah when he died? More than 120 years. See Genesis 9 verse 29, And all the days of Noah were 950 years when he died. Some Christian theologians claim that this does not mean that the maximum age of man will be 120 years. But that the flood would come in 120 years. Even this doesn't fit, because at the time of the flood Noah would have been 620, 500 plus 120, years old. However, the Bible states that he was 600 years. Study Genesis 5 verse 32, and Noah was 500 years old, Genesis 7 verse 6. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Christianity believes that God created man in his image, white, black or another color, male or female. This is according to Genesis 1 verse 26, and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. But this contradicts Isaiah 40 verses 18 and 25, To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? See also Psalm 89 verse 7, For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? And Jeremiah 10 verses 6 to 7, For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There is none like unto thee. Christian, but all these are in the Old Testament. Muslim, well then, let's go to the New Testament. John 5 verse 37, Ye have neither heard his, God's, voice at any time, nor seen his shape. John 14 verse 9. He that has seen me has seen the Father. John 5 verse 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. John 8 verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. These are only some of the contradictions in the New Testament. You will find more if we discuss the truth of such doctrines of modern Christianity as the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus Christ, the divine sonship of Jesus, original sin and atonement. Not to mention the biblical accounts of many prophets engaging in degrading activities, worshipping false gods and committing incest, rape, and adultery. Christian, where do you find that in the Bible? Muslim, Noah, peace be upon him, is reported to have been drunk to the point of becoming naked in the presence of his grown-up sons, Genesis 9 verses 23-24. And Shem and Japhet took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness.
and Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Solomon, peace be upon him, was accused of worshipping false gods, 1 Kings 11 verses 9 to 10. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Aaron, a prophet who accompanied his brother Moses, peace be upon him, on his mission to Pharaoh, was accused of having fashioned the golden calf for the Israelites to worship, Exodus 32 verse 4. And he, Aaron, received them, golden earrings, at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a golden calf, and they said. These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. You can read of prophet Lot's incestuous encounter with his two daughters, Genesis 19 verse 36, thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. You can read of a prophet who was married to two sisters at the same time, Genesis 29 verse 28, and Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week. And he, Laban, gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And another prophet accused of adultery, 2 Samuel 11 verses 4 to 5. And David sent messengers, and took her, the wife of Uriah, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. My question is, how could David, peace be upon him, be accepted in the genealogy of Jesus, peace be upon him, when it started with a person who committed adultery? May Allah forbid it. Does this not contradict what is mentioned in Deuteronomy 23 verse 3, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Another allegation is that of incest along with rape by Ammon, the son of David, on his sister Tamar, 2 Samuel 13 verse 14. Howbeit he, Ammon, would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, Tamar, forced her and lay with her. Still another multiple rape, by Absalom on David's concubines, is recounted in 2 Samuel 16 verse 33. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Another incest, by Judah and Tamar, his daughter-in-law Judah on his way to Timnath to shear his sheep saw Tamar. He thought her to be a harlot because she had her face covered. Genesis 38 verse 18. And he, Judah, gave it, signet, bracelet, and staff, to her, and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. Although Jews and Muslims often have differing views, no Muslim would dare to write a book and stamp any Israelite prophet like Judah. David, Jesus, and so on, with rape, adultery, incest, or prostitution. All prophets were sent by Allah for the guidance of mankind. Do you think that God had sent the wrong people for guidance? Christian, I don't think so. But don't you believe in the Bible? Muslim, we believe in all divine scriptures, but in their original form. God sent a prophet as a warner to each nation, and some of them with a scripture as a guidance for that particular nation only. The Sahuf was brought by Abraham, the Torah by Moses, the Zabor by David, and the Injil by Jesus, peace be upon him. None of these scriptures remained in their original form. Finally, Allah sent Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the seal of all prophets and with the Qur'an as a guidance for all mankind, anywhere and anytime. Jesus himself said that he was sent only to the people of Israel, Matthew 15 verse 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Also, Matthew 1 verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. He even said that he came not to make changes but to fulfill, Matthew 5 verses 17 to 18, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Christian, but in Mark 16 verse 15 Jesus said, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Muslim, this contradicts what is mentioned above in Matthew 15 verse 24 and Matthew 1 verse 21. Secondly, Mark 16 verses 9 to 20 is a later addition to the Gospel of Mark and has no authenticity at all because it didn't exist in the oldest manuscripts. Plus it has some stylistic features which prove that it came from another hand, that's why it has been expunged in many Bibles. The New American Standard Bible has put this part in brackets and made the following commentary. All the oldest manuscripts omit from verse 9 through 20. The New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. 
used by the Jehovah's Witnesses admits that certain ancient manuscripts add a long conclusion or a short conclusion after Mark 16 verse 8 but that some omit those verses. And the Revised Standard Version prints the following footnote. Some of the most ancient authorities bring the book to a close at the end of verse 8. This means that the resurrection is not true, as it is described in Mark 16 verse 9. Christian, but Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Muslim, all nations must be explained as the twelve tribes of Israel, otherwise it contradicts Matthew 15 verse 24 and Matthew 1 verse 21. In the New American Standard Bible and the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, it is not translated as all nations, but as all these nations, which means the twelve tribes of Israel. Also, the Greek Bible it says, the nations, which means the twelve tribes of Israel. What do you think of the Bible now? Christian, I am not so sure about its holiness now. Muslim, I am sure you will be convinced of the authenticity of Islam after we have discussed our differences. The Doctrine of the Trinity Muslim, do you still believe in the Trinity? Christian, it is said in the first epistle of John 5 verses 7 to 8, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Muslim, that is in the King James Version, authorized in 1611, and formed the strongest evidence for the doctrine of the Trinity. But now this part, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, has been expunged in the Revised Standard Version of 1952 and 1971 and in many other Bibles, as it was a gloss that had encroached on the Greek text. 1 John 5 verses 7 to 8 in the New American Standard Bible says, and it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness, the Spirit and the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Also, in the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, used by the Jehovah's Witnesses, you will find, for there are three witness bearers. The Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. I can understand if you don't know that this important part has been removed. But I wonder why many ministers and preachers are not aware of this. The Trinity is not biblical. The word Trinity is not even in the Bible or Bible dictionaries. It was never taught or mentioned by Jesus, peace be upon him. There is no basis or proof in the Bible for its acceptance. Christian, but in Matthew 28 verse 19 we still find. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This part has not been removed yet. Is this not a proof of the Trinity? Muslim, no. If three persons are sitting or eating together, does it mean that they form one person? No. The formulation of the Trinity by Athanasius, an Egyptian deacon from Alexandria, was accepted by the Council of Nicaea in 325 after Jesus' birth, more than three centuries after Jesus had left. No doubt Roman paganism had an influence on this doctrine of a triune God. The Sabbath was shifted to Sunday and December 25th, the birthday of their son God Mithra, was introduced as Jesus' birthday. Although the Bible clearly predicted and forbade the decoration of Christmas trees in Jeremiah 10 verses 2 to 5, thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it moves not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not, they must need be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. As Christianity deviated far from the original teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, Allah sent his last prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a revivalist to undo changes made by man. The Roman Julian calendar was introduced as the Christian era, pork was allowed. Circumcision was abolished by Paul, Galatians 5 verse 2, Behold, I Paul say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. The Qian warns in Surah 5 colon 73-74. The Christians who say that Allah is part of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, have committed disbelief. Allah is far above such a statement. Allah is not many, but he is only one God who has no partner. 
if they do not stop saying such things, a painful punishment will afflict them. Will these people not retract this statement, repent to Allah and ask his forgiveness for the idolatry they committed? Allah is forgiving towards the one who repents, whatever may have been the sin, even if it was disbelief. Allah is compassionate to the believers. Do you still believe in the Trinity, which was never taught by Jesus? Christian, but God and Jesus are one, John 14 verse 11 Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Muslim, read John 17 verse 21. Christian, that they, the disciples, all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us. Muslim, it is clear here that God and Jesus are one, and that the disciples are one in Jesus and God. If Jesus is God because he is in God, why are the disciples then not God, as they are like Jesus, who is in God? If God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost form one unit, the Trinity, with the disciples included they should form a fifteen-unit God. Christian, but Jesus is God according to John 14 verse 9. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Muslim, look at what comes before and after, John 14 verse 8 Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. John 14 verse 9 Jesus saith unto him. Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Jesus asked Philip how to show God to the disciples, which is impossible. You should believe in God by admiring his creation, the sun, the moon, all creation, and Jesus, who was created by God. He said in John 4 verse 24, God is a spirit, and in John 5 verse 37, ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. How can you see a spirit? What they saw was Jesus, not God. Paul said in 1 Timothy 6 verse 16. Whom no man hath seen, nor can see. So, what you see is not. God. The Qur'an says in Surah 6 103, Vision comprehends him not, but he comprehends, all, vision. He is al Latif, the most subtle and courteous, al Kabir, well acquainted with all things. Vision cannot encompass him, but his vision covers and encompasses all things. He is the one who is subtle with his righteous servants and is aware of them. Christian, it is hard to deny what has been taught to us since childhood. Muslim, maybe the following questions will give you a better understanding of the Trinity, what is the Holy Spirit? Christian, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Ghost and is also God. We are taught that the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God, but the Father is not the Son, the Holy Ghost is not the Father and the Son is not the Holy Ghost, three gods in one God. Muslim, read Matthew 1 verse 18. Christian, now the birth of Jesus Christ was in this way, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Muslim, compare this with Luke 1 verses 26 to 27. Christian, and in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Muslim, in Jesus' miraculous birth Matthew mentioned the Holy Ghost and Luke mentioned the angel Gabriel. What is the Holy Ghost? Christian, that being the case, the Holy Ghost is the angel Gabriel. Muslim, do you still believe in the Trinity now? Christian, then God is God and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel, and Jesus is. Muslim, let me help you, Jesus is a prophet, the son of Mary. Christian, how can you solve what we call a divine mystery? Muslim, we use the Qur'an as the standard to correct man-made changes in previously revealed scriptures. If you believe in one God, and Jesus, peace be upon him, as a prophet, why don't you go one step further and accept Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the last messenger? Recite after me the Shahida or witness, testimony, first in English and then in Arabic. Christian, I bear witness that there is no other God worthy to be worshipped except Allah, who has no partner. And Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Ashhadu ala ilaha illa Allah wa dahu la sharika la, wa ashhadu ana Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. But what about my great grandparents? I would like to stay with them. They were all Christians. Muslim, Abraham left his parents and great grandparents when the truth, Islam, was revealed to him. Everyone is responsible for himself. Maybe the truth hadn't come to your ancestors as clearly as it has to you. The Qur'an says in Surah 17:15.
Whoever is guided to faith, then the reward of his being guided is for his own good, and whoever goes astray, the punishment for his going astray is to his detriment. No soul carries the sin of another soul, nor do I ever punish a people until I establish proof against them by sending messengers to them. The truth has come to you and it is up to you. Christian, can I accept both Islam and Christianity? Muslim, there is no compulsion in religion. No one is forced to enter the religion of Islam, as it is clearly the true religion and there is no need to force anyone to believe in it. Truth stands clear from Fossad. Whoever rejects all those things that are worshipped besides Allah and frees himself from them, and has faith in Allah alone, has held on to the strongest rope for salvation on the day of resurrection and which will never break. Allah hears the statements of his servants, knows their actions and will reward them accordingly. Al-Baqarah, 256 You can do what you want. But if you combine both faiths, it means you haven't surrendered to Allah. You are still a disbeliever, as he states in Surah 4,150-152. Those who disbelieve in Allah and his messengers, and who want to make a distinction between Allah and his messengers by believing in Allah yet rejecting his messengers by saying. We accept some messengers and reject others, and they want to take a path between disbelief and belief, thinking that this will save them. Those who follow such a stance as regards their faith are in fact disbelievers, for disbelieving in some of the messengers is similar to disbelief in Allah and all his messengers. Allah has prepared a humiliating punishment for all disbelievers on the day of rising as a just recompense for their deliberate refusal to follow the faith as required of them. Those who believe in Allah, declare his oneness, do not associate any partner with him, accept all of his messengers and do not make a distinction between any of them as the disbelievers do. Allah will give such people a great reward for their faith and good actions. Allah is forgiving and merciful towards the servant who repents to him. You may agree with me if we discuss some other issues. Christian, should we recite a confession, Sharada, before we are fully committed? Muslim, as soon as you reach adulthood and you are mentally competent, you are then committed whether you recite the Sharada or not. Allah created this world for a purpose. He has supplied you with the organs to differentiate between right and wrong. He has sent many prophets as warners. We are created to worship him and to compete with each other in good deeds in this world. Surah 3 191. Our Lord. You have not created, all, this without purpose, glory to you. Those who remember Allah in all conditions, standing, sitting and lying on their sides, and reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. Saying that their Lord did not originate this wonderful creation without a reason, and is far above that, and ask him to protect them from the punishment of the fire of hell. enabling them to do good and protecting them from doing wrong, they say. Our Lord, whoever you enter into the fire of hell from your creation has been humiliated and disgraced. On the day of judgment, the wrongdoers will have no helpers to protect them from Allah's punishment and repayment. Our Lord, we have heard a caller to faith saying, have faith in your Lord. So we responded to him and have faith in what he calls us to and we follow the sacred law, so forgive us our sins and do not disgrace us, and do not take us to account for our bad actions. Let us die with the righteous, and enable us to do good and stay away from disobedience. Our Lord, give us guidance and the help in this world that you promised us through the words of your messengers, and do not disgrace us on the day of judgment by entering us into the fire of hell. Our Lord, you are generous and never do you break your promise. Ali Imran 191-194 Surah 90,8-10 Have we not made for him, mankind, a pair of eyes? And a tongue and a pair of lips? And shown him the two ways, good and evil? Did I not create eyes for him with which he can see? And a tongue and lips with which he can speak? And I made the paths of goodness and evils known to him. al Balad 8-10 Surah 51 colon 56, and I, Allah, created not the jinn and mankind except that they should worship me, alone. Surah 18 colon 7, verily. We have made that which is on earth as an adornment for it, the earth, in order that we may test them, mankind, as to which of them is better in deeds. Surely, I have made the creation on the face of this earth an adornment for it, so I can test them to see which of them does the best actions which please Allah and which of them is worst in actions.
so that I may reward everyone with what they deserve. Alkaf, 7, 